Son God who came and cleaned the yard, came and cleaned the church. We have some people that's been here sometime all week. Um, the mangoes are almost done, so the yard will be will not be that dirty again. But I'm sad because a lot of people will not be having mangoes. I love when Reverend can get some mangoes. Beloved, this morning I want to focus on a scripture, a few scriptures. Things are not getting better. Things are not getting better. And we can complain how much we want. That will not change. God don't want us to be complainers. When we complain, we show lack of faith. Lack of trust in our God. Because he has promised to take care of us. And no matter what come our way, he has promised to be with us even to the very end. And if he is with us, nothing can harm us. Nothing. It was the last hop spread. We get it. And we got Mr. Cheese too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember the children in the wilderness. God provided for them. When they complain. So this morning I want I don't want to encourage us. It will seem as if God's people, his children, his chosen ones, have always been complainers. From the beginning, you remember the situation when sin, when God came and called Adam? What did Adam say? He said, God, you see the woman that gave me? Complaining start. Men, you talk about women? <laughs> We feel women complain. Why when they go cut the lawn? The children want socks. They don't have no bread. Buy some bread when they're coming. It started back then. Adam said, Lord, is the woman you give me? You know? Blaming God and complaining. Was talking about the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. When they came out of Egypt, they wanted to go back for garlic. Garlic is a real nice thing, you know. They missed garlic. They want to go back. Moses, your brother, said to kill us in the wilderness. They wanted food. God sent meat and bread. Manna, the bread, and he sent quails, birds. So they had KFC and they had bread. But they complained. And on and on through the ages, when we read the scriptures, we see where God's people, even prophets, even prophets, complain and complain and complain because of a lack of trust, lack of faith in God. So I say, even today, even today, after all that God has done for us, after all that God has brought us through, situation after situation, some of us can testify of coming through COVID. Kathy and I, Sister Yola, Brother Hayden, at the point of death, Sister Yola will message me on that bed and, and, and it will sound as if she's going, but she was not worried, but it was so, it was so bad. But she's here. This lady is over 70. She's here. She's in the house of God. She is showing faithfulness and gratefulness to her Lord and Savior who brought us through. There are young people who didn't even go through a quarter of what you go through. And they won't even give God that attention or that gratitude. You know, it's sad, it's sad. But we complain every little thing, Flower Bona. Are you buying it? <laughs> every single thing that go up, we still buy it. Gas one look at the, the, the groceries. Our, our, our daughter, our big daughter, work at, at Massey stores. Massey stores were closed. The, 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 the working hours were shut down. And they were still in the store till maybe midnight. Because people were in the store. They can't put it in blow. They have to wait until the cash for the groceries. And so the workers had to sacrifice the hours there because of convenience. People rushing. And then when the storm passed. God is at training. God is at training. You have to see people praising God and thanking God for delivering us from the road. 
Do you know what happened to Matlot, the Grand River? Do you know what happened up there? It was disaster up there. But yes, so some of us, I, I, I wrote my sister, she sent me a picture that her daughter sent her with an ID card, Jesus Christ. I said, hey, listen, nice blasphemy. Don't send that to me. And I explained to her, she was very apologetic. She said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I said, there's a signature there. Did Jesus sign that? That is wrong, that is not right. Don't be promoting that and forwarding that. Don't do that. You know, and, and, and we play with God. We play with God and, and we march and we do all sorts of things. Listen, nothing takes God by surprise. God knew this was going to take place. And you know what? He wants us to understand that we have to trust Him. We go through situations so that we can know who our God is. The harder the situation, the bigger your God is in your sight. Because you are, you, hey, my God brought me through. And you know, the, the thing about us human beings is that when we face another problem, we are in doubts again. We forget what our Father did for us last month or last week or even yesterday. Sad, it's sad that we go through this. And it continues. All that he has brought us through, we still do we still worry, we still complain. But this morning I just want to encourage you with a few verses from the scripture. The Apostle Paul writes, which is my lead verse, he writes to us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Look at this. In everything, in everything, not some things, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everything that happens to you, anything and everything that happens to you day by day is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Sometimes we get links, like the scripture said a while ago, when we took the communion. If we do it unworthily, when we sin, we have to pay the price. We have to pay the price. So you know, like when people say, you get up as you get up, they run in the fridge, the next thing is out of off. The morning they are back with a little piece of short pants. And you open the freezer. When I was young, I could have run out in the rain and play, Brother Brian. Now I'm older, put on a hat. Because I go there and there went and sat up off. You understand? We pay the price. We pay the price. In everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. As children of God, whatever we go through, know this. It's the will. It was already done before the foundation of the world. All that we go through now, God knew already. It takes us by surprise. But God knew. And if God knew already, let us say he wants you to know. That anything that happens to you, it is the will of God in Christ Jesus. All you have got to know is that you are walking in the will of God. When you are walking in the will of God, anything and everything that comes your way, God allows it. It is God. It's the will of God. Amen? We have got to be thankful that all things work together for good. If we belong to Him. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know, you know, we behave like if we don't know. But that's not. Sometimes the way we react is like if we don't know. If we don't know the word, then we don't know. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And to them who are being called according to his purpose. If you are called according to his purpose, all things work together for your good. You may not understand why they did not cost you. Our sister Mary, you may not understand why the devil allow or whoever that that man to bounce your car. But wait and see the hand of God. The disciples were walking one day with Jesus and there was a young man that was blind. And they said, Lord, who, who, who said he or your father? Jesus said, that's not the situation. 
It's not because he said no, his father, but it's that God will be glorified. You see, when you come to your situation and you come to the house of God and you stand up and you testify and you give God glory, you encourage the saints. You encourage people. God will be glorified in your situation. Look at this precious lady. Look at Brother Hayden. We used to be keeping in contact every day, every day. Brother Hayden could have hardly talk. He was on um, oxygen and what have you. Man is worshiping today. We can glorify God. He has brought us through every situation, every single situation. There is a reason for it, beloved. You are called. You are called. Let us live like the called one. Amen. We have got to be thankful that God's grace is sufficient to sustain us in every situation. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Listen to me, beloved. When we become weak, it's then God's strength comes upon us, man. When we are empty, Brother Brian, God fills us. Sometimes we need to be empty of all the stuff that we have in us. Alone. You see, all we gain of ourselves, all of our education, all of our money, all of our possessions, what we work hard for, and say, well, that is mine, that is mine. Sometimes God will just and take everything, you know, that you will acknowledge Him and know that it is He who has given you the strength and the ability to gain them. Everything comes from God. Everything. Most gladly, therefore, you think COVID was a nice thing? You think diabetes is a nice thing? You think any sickness is a nice thing? Nobody wants to be sick. But sad to say, this, this flesh here is the element of the world. This is dust. And so we are subject to the elements of the world. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul said he will glory. There, you see, these scriptures he wrote here, he said that he went to the Lord three times. He saw the Lord three times about a torn in the flesh. There was something about the Apostle Paul. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. And the Apostle Paul turned around and said, most gladly therefore will I glory in my infirmities. I will not let the sickness keep me down. For the past three weeks or so, Brother Brian, this thing they call vertigo. First time I experienced that. And now that I experience it, the amount of people, young people and all, I am hearing that have this thing or had it or experience it. It's a, it's not a wicked thing. You're dizzy all the time. You want to throw up and all kind of thing. But that will keep me down. And I thank God I stopped the medication because the medication was making me feel worse. And I trust my God. I trust my God. And I'm here today. I'm standing. I'm not busy. I'd rather get busy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities and the power of Christ may rest upon me. All honor, all glory be to Jesus this morning. We have got to be thankful that nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans chapter 8 verses 37 to 39. Instead of complaining, beloved, we must be thankful. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded. I am convinced. And I pray this morning, I trust that you are too. I have no doubts that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The love of God is Christ Jesus. 
we partook in the communion this morning. That is the love of God. What shall separate you this morning, beloved? What shall separate you? Some people, the rain separate them. Some people, the job separate them. Some people, a cough separate them. Some people, the COVID separate them. Some people have problems in wearing a mask, so they won't come. What? Look at them, look at them. Tell me back up on that scripture, please, Sister Kathy. What shall separate us? I am persuaded. In all these things, I am persuaded that neither death, not even if I die, not even if I live, no angels, no principalities, no wicked spirits, no powers of the enemy, no things present now, no things to come, no height, no depth, air, sea, no other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. No man, no woman, no situation, no financial situation, no marriage problem, nothing shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have got to be thankful that God supports us spiritually when trials come. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with, with, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Beloved, let me tell you something. When you are overwhelmed, Mama, you know, when you can't take it no more, and all you can say is, mm, mm, I don't know what to say again. I don't know what to, what, mm, 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 and you're lost for words. Even in your relationship with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your boss, on the job, even in the church. You don't know what to say again. You don't know what to do again. God's Spirit. The Holy Spirit who dwells in you and I. The Bible says he makes intercessions to the Father for us with groanings which can be uttered. What you can say, mm. and the Spirit of God cries out for you, beloved. Do you know that? Can you grasp that? You are not alone. You are not alone. Don't be a complainer. Be thankful that you have the Spirit of God who is always with you. I will cry for you in every single situation. There are situations that people don't want to talk about. Some are afraid. Some, some, some just don't know how to talk about it. And I'm talking about even in relationships with husband and wife. With parents and children, you just don't know how to say it. Maybe you're ashamed to say something. You're afraid to say something. But I tell you this morning, the Spirit of God makes intercession. Prayer is being made from even from within you that you cannot utter. Amen? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Rough circumstances will prove the depth of your faith. Sometimes, we, in fact, all the time we want things smooth, brother Sam. We want things easy. We don't even want the car to give trouble. We want things easy. But hey, listen. We are in this world. We will have problems. We, we, we have Elder Harold here is a senior policeman. And I know I have been around police people for a long time. It's not easy. It's not easy to deal with what, what's going on outside right now. Or even inside, even in the station. There's all types you have to deal with. And so it is with each and every one of us. We have situations to deal with. But rough circumstances will prove the depth of our faith in God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Wherein you will greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Even though we rejoice, right now you might be in, in a season of, of, of roughness, in a season of toughness, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor 
and glory and the appearing of Jesus Christ. Your faith is much more precious than gold. Gold, when it is tried by fire, it shines. It comes out. It shines. It is fire that brings out the worth and the beauty in gold. If gold stares, it is black and beauty and ugly. But when you burn it and burn it and burn it, it shines. The worth and the beauty comes out. Your faith is more precious than gold. So listen to me. Understand this. Your faith need more fire. Not just fire. Sister Anna. More fire. You think it easy? You think it easy? Sister Anisha, your faith need more fire. Much more fire. You want to shine more than gold? We need fire. It is fire that brings out the pureness, purity. Amen? Hallelujah. And it will show you that the, the real glory will be at the appearing of Jesus Christ when he says, Come in blessing, my Father. Enter in. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, Paul writes, Rejoice evermore. One of the, I think, no, it's not the shortest. It's one of the shortest. The shortest is John 11, 35. Jesus wept. This is the second 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16, rejoice evermore. In every situation, give thanks, verse 18. Verse 16 says, rejoice evermore. Joy is not the same thing as happiness. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is for a while. Happiness is you get something and you're happy to buy. You throw a body party for you, you get a body gift. You know, you get a new car, you get a new house, you're happy. But that is not joy. Joy comes from the Lord. We can be sad or unhappy at times, but still joyful. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Go right it. You see what he said? I want to use the last part of this word for the look for the for the day of the Holy and so on. He said, eat, drink, and share. Send for who don't have. Sharing beloved. Loving is sharing. Amen. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. In everything, rejoice. Was the joy of the Lord. Do not let situations rob you of the joy of the Lord. Do not let financial distress rob you of your joy. Do not let your wife rob you of your joy. Do not let your husband or the pastor or brethren rob you of your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When we are robbed of our joy, we become a weakling. Amen? And we don't want to be a weakling. When we become a weakling, the Satan will let us go and push us over. Circumstances will arise that we may not rejoice about, but may not give, we may not give thanks for. For instance, an accident. We are rejoicing about that. And then on top of the whole thing, the man wants to fight them. He bumps the car and he wants to fight them. He wants to bring people. So he wants to instill fear. That is the work of the devil. That is the work of the devil. But my God is for me. He is for me. Who shall be against me? So we pray about that situation. No bad boy ain't coming. They can't, they, they, they don't know wrong for Jesus. Hallelujah. The vehicle may be damaged. Don't allow that to take your joy. We have a God. We give God thanks that He is with us. And also that we have insurance. Amen? But we give God thanks. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. No matter what situation come your way, beloved, be assured that your God is with you, even to the very end. We may not rejoice in needy 
times. Flower going up. It may not happen when it's a bag of flower. There may be worry. Listen to me. We can rejoice because his word says, I will supply all your needs. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. But my God, say my God. Say my God. My God. My God, not my job, not my boss, not my husband, not my wife, not my car, but my God shall supply all, not some, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In case you don't know, God will never go. He cannot go back. As a matter of fact, I'm told that the Harold, I'm told that the streets are paved with gold. And I was preaching in an open air meeting in Pinto. They say that plenty of bandits love there. I don't know how true that is. But I, I invited all the bandits over the microphone to come. Don't rob nobody. I said, come and accept Jesus. You love gold chain and so on. I said, I'm going to be going and walking on gold. Come and accept Jesus. Up there full of gold. Full of jewels. Amen. My God shall supply all. Listen, one scripture says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You know how much on a thousand hills? When we drive in, brother Sam used to walk in the city and the cattle up there. Well, wait, look at the cattle boy. Can you imagine a thousand hills? What only had to say, take a cattle in brother Ray. <laughs> and all your people, I mean, you're looking at your stress for he shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Beloved, we can rejoice even in death. We have had some family members that lose family members. We have some. Just recently, Sister Janet, a son died. We can rejoice even in death. Even in death, we are comforted and we are strengthened by his word. Psalms chapter 116 and verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious. We are precious in the sight of the Lord. When we die, man. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. We are confident, I say. And willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether we present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. So whether we are present, whether we are absent, we are accepted of Him. That's the promise that we have. Persecution, trials, hardships. It's not something that we are normally thankful for. But God will use these by His will for our benefit to make us perfect. God will use trials. God will use temptation. God will use situations. God will use people, problems. We will become perfect. The trial of your faith will give patience. And I want to go back to our leaders. In everything this morning, beloved, I want to encourage you. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks. No matter what come your way, know this that your God, your Father, the Jesus that loved you and died for you, He cares for you. Scripture says, casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you in everything. Let us not be complainers. Let us be thankful for who we are, where we are, whatever we have because of Jesus. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Whatever come your way, say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You didn't see any groceries? Thank you, Father. Maybe you want me to fast today. I don't know if it's by the end of the day. Somebody bring a nice um, beef or corn soup or something to break the little gaps. In everything, in everything, in everything, 
give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Come and pray. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you, we give you glory. Thank you for your word to our people's heart. And I pray, oh God, that this word will stay with them. Lord, give us the strength to give thanks in these times. The days that are coming, some people say we have been prophets of doom, but we are warned in the scripture that in the last days, perilous things will happen. Men will become whatever. We are seeing it over and over, oh God, and we know that your coming is near. I pray for strength for our people this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch our minds and our hearts, touch our spirits, that we will stand strong. We will not be complainers, but that we will be thankful to you for being our God, being our provider, our protector, our physician. We thank you this morning. May each and every life that is here, those that are not here, I pray, oh God, they will touch them right now. Those that need a touch in their bodies, those that need a touch in their finances. Oh God, whatever the need is, Lord, cause us to see you as our God who loves us and cares for us, our provider. In the name of Jesus, touch us like I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.